Famed as the jewel of the Orient, Ceylon is a tropical island of unusual beauty, located at the southernmost tip of India. It was known to the ancient Greeks and Romans who named it Taprobane, but since independence in 1948, it is called Sri Lanka, the resplendent land. Legend tells us that when God expelled Adam from the Garden of Eden, he placed him upon these heights, a merciful gesture because they represent so closely the Garden of Eden. This is where Buddha is said to have rested, leaving an impression of his footprint on a mountain top over 2,300 years ago. Today, the economy of Ceylon is bound closely to this green landscape, where thousands of acres of tea have been planted. And it is here that 500 million pounds of leaves are picked each year for the teapots of the world. Located in the center of the island, this area might be described as the heart of Sri Lanka, where because of its battlements of mountains, it retains its old customs and superstitions. For centuries, the hill people lived independent lives, insulated from the Portuguese, Dutch and British invaders who occupied the lowlands. At the foot of the hills, a rich reward awaits the prospector. For deep down in the soil, mixed with the mud and clay, lie gems. Sapphires, rubies, amethysts, topaz and zircons are there for the picking. The methods for mining gems have remained unchanged throughout the centuries. A shaft is sunk into the ground by sheer manpower, and each load of soil is laboriously shifted by hand. These are not pleasant conditions to work under, for added to the mud and water is the ever-present tropic heat, but the rewards could be great. As the soil is removed from the shaft, it is heaped in a mound. This is only a halfway process, for when sufficient material has been excavated, it has to be returned to the shaft again, basket by basket, to be washed and examined. Almost anyone can become a gem miner, for all that is required, apart from a capacity for hard work, is a license to dig, and they are not difficult to obtain. Everyone prays that today will be the day that something valuable will be found. It is at this stage that an expert's eye is required to pick out real gems from worthless stones. This tiny stone might be valuable, but the entire day's work may only yield three or four gems, and even then, their true value will not be known until they have been cut and polished. These craftsmen work with the simplest hand-operated tools, using a skill that has been handed down by their forebears. It is possible this gem might eventually cost a small fortune in a jeweler's shop thousands of miles away. It is a tradition in Sri Lanka that the young pull their weight, and in many households, the children undertake such chores as grinding millet to make flour. Family ties are stronger here than in the West, but like the Westerner, pets are part of the family. Here, instead of playing football with his friends, a boy may help in the preparation of the evening meal by slicing onions. Traditionally, many daughters work in the kitchens, and from an early age they are taught how to prepare and cook food for the family. Thank you. 
Many of the handicrafts of Sri Lanka are made in the homes and cottage industries are found everywhere. Production methods are simple, using primitive equipment and age-old techniques. The traditional pottery of Ceylon is terracotta, and this low-fired pottery is popular throughout the island. Most of it is utilitarian, water pots, cooking vessels, bowls and vases. After the clay has been dried in the sun, the pots are fired in a low temperature kiln. This method of production dates back to the beginning of the island's history, and so do the religions, of which Buddhism is one of the most popular. In a small temple in the village of Medawala, these rare paintings are carefully preserved. They date from the 14th century and depict scenes in the life of Buddha in his previous incarnation when he was a king. It was during this incarnation that he gave away his wife and children as a gesture of freedom from lust and craving. Although the paintings are on wooden panels, they have remained in original condition and no renovation of any kind has been done to this day. The temple also contains some unusual wood carvings, which, like this fish, are equally well preserved. Sri Lanka has many active fishing communities dotted around the thousand miles of coastline. The men who man these boats are typical of fishermen throughout the world. Unafraid, they will put to sea whenever conditions permit. Their primitive boats are no more than simple outrigger canoes, yet these brave men will sail during the monsoon months, when the Indian Ocean is often wild and tempestuous. has also brought a living to the few remaining craftsmen who are skilled in the art of making tortoiseshell ware. Today it is a dying art. Only a handful of workers remain. The government, realizing that the turtle is in danger of extinction, have declared it a protected animal. And once the existing stock of shell is used up, the craft will be part of the island's history. The craftsman's tools are simple but rather unique. The term tortoiseshell is a misnomer, as the articles are really made from a particular part of the shell of the hawksbill turtle. A wide variety of products are made, ranging from necklaces and bangles to pendants inlaid with silver. Bangles are made from a strip of shell carefully heated over a charcoal fire and then bent to shape around a wooden block. Once the bangle is removed from the block, the ends are joined together by heat and the bangle is given a final polish. Unlike the working of the tortoise shell, mask making is a craft which is likely to continue for many years. This is another example where the skills can be traced back over many generations. The masks are carved from a light but durable local wood with patience and artistry. They represent supernatural beings of grotesque and fearsome appearance and are used by devil dancers in villages throughout the island in healing and exorcist ceremonies.
this day, devil dancers are called to the villages to heal the sick. A patient who is supposed to be possessed by a devil is entranced by the dancers, and the spirit is driven out of the body to effect a cure. Although Western medical science might scoff at this form of healing, some remarkable cures have taken place during these ceremonies, and they remain one of the mysteries of the country. With restriction on the import of textiles, the art of spinning and weaving cloth on simple equipment has been revived and is rapidly catching on as a profitable cottage industry. Although much of the equipment is homemade from commonplace objects, the techniques date back to the time of the ancient kings of Ceylon.